What's up, everyone? I'm James Young with James Young Photography, and I'm bringing you episode number 26 of Teach Me How to Lightroom. Today is a special episode because this is the first time that we're doing a photo that I didn't take. Now, over at Frono's Photo, Jared Poland just released some of the first raw files available to us of the new Sigma 135mm f1.8 art lens. Now this is a lens that I already have pre-ordered and I'm anxiously waiting for it to come in. But Jared Poland was kind enough to release these out into the world and in his video he said just do whatever you want with them. So I'm going to process his photo today. And we're starting off with this image here of Todd Wolf, and we're going here. Bam! Don't forget, there's a link in the description to the raw file, which is actually Jared Poland's video over on his channel, Frono's Photo. So make sure you go and check that out. So let's go ahead and click reset and let's get into it. Now in Jared Poland's video, he did mention that these are just test shots just to take a look at how sharp the lens is, see if it can nail that critical focus right on the eyeball when you're doing portraits. And he did exactly that. The lens was able to reach critical focus right on that eyeball. But for the editing process, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to crop this image just a little bit. And the reason why I'm cropping is because I'm gonna rotate to make this just a little bit more straight. and so that we're at less of an angle. Now again, this was a test shot strictly for the purposes of seeing the sharpness. So just firing a shot like that, there's no problem. Now let's get right into the basic module. So for this, the exposure was nailed. I'm not gonna adjust the overall exposure. Now with the contrast, we're gonna go pretty heavy. We're gonna go about plus 50. Awesome, off to a great start. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna address the highlights. You can see right here, right here on the nose a little bit, that light is a little hard. So we're gonna back down the highlights just a little bit, about minus 20. Then with our shadows, you can see all the shadows are very, very dark. So we're gonna open up those quite a bit. We're going to about plus 60. Now this is awesome, check this out. We're really pushing the shadows here, plus 60. This was shot at ISO 320 on a Nikon D5, and there are just almost no noise to be seen at all. Really, really impressive. With the whites, we're not gonna change the whites at all. And then with the blacks, we're gonna raise these up as well. Let's go about plus 40 on the blacks, perfect. Now with our presence, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring our clarity down just a little bit. And the reason why we do this, because this is a really tight portrait. And when you're using really good glass, like a Sigma art lens, when you're using a high-end camera, like a Nikon D5, that's just gonna bring out all kinds of incredible detail, which most of the time that's fantastic. However, with portraits, seeing every little nook and cranny in the highest amount of detail possible, not always the best thing in the world. So don't be the person that goes, cranks the clarity all the way up on portraits that doesn't look good and on the flip side don't be the person that goes like this and makes everything all milky and disgusting no don't do that about minus 10 is about fine now in terms of our overall exposure with our shadows our highlights i like where we're at now this is where we're going to have some some creative liberty here i'm going to go a little bit more desaturated a little bit higher contrast on this and this is how we do that. We're gonna take the vibrance, cut that down to about minus 20. Same thing with saturation. That's gonna bring our total color saturation a little bit lower, just as the labels are labeled. They're very self-defining. Now, next thing we're gonna do, let's scroll down to our HSL section here, and we're gonna go to saturation. And with our cooler tones, kind of the aqua through purple magenta-ish area, we're gonna cut the saturation on that just a little bit somewhere around minus 35 or so for aqua. And then we'll do similar values for blue, purple, and magenta. Now you can see here, we did kind of a linear type of progression here. We do that so we don't have any extreme clipping on our colors. The best example of that is if we do orange, a lot of skin tones are in the orange register. 
If we cut that all the way down, all of a sudden your portrait most likely will become a zombie. And again, don't do that. Now, because we took a lot of the color out of the image, we're gonna compensate a little bit by changing our color temperature. So we're at 4050 right now, and let's bump that up to about 4300. Great, the life is back in the subject. Todd Wolf is looking good. So now let's really round this thing out. Let's get to our tone curve. Now what I like to do right next to point curve where it says linear, this is actually a drop down menu here. And I like to start with medium contrast curve just to see where it takes us. Great, it did exactly that. It added a good deal of contrast to the image. Now what I wanna do is I wanna flatten out that lower end of the spectrum. So what we're gonna do, double click on the node, second from the left there, and just raise the one all the way to the left. And that is gonna give us that matte-like finish. So I think we can get a little bit more contrast out of this image. Let's try this, let's see what it does. Now this is a great tool here, and Adobe has conveniently placed it right at the bottom of the list here on effects. Go to dehaze, again, pretty much all the way at the bottom. Let's go to about plus 10. Oh wow, that looks, that looks good. So this is about where I would end the edit. This is exactly where you can create a preset if you like this edit, if you like the way it went. Let's take a look at where we started. Let's see that straight out of camera. Bam, definitely not bad. Lots of contrast packed in that 135 Sigma art. But take a look where we ended. Bam, love it. Very warm, very contrasty with that, especially with that matte finish at the end. Just gives it that really warm look. Now you can always go in with a brush here, press K on your keyboard, and you can add some, some effects to the eyes, make the eyes really pop. Go over there to the other eye as well. And you can see with that off, with that on, that would be of course in addition to the preset. So go ahead and turn off that adjustment brush. That's where we're gonna leave the edit. What do you guys think? How would you edit this image? Let me know down in the comments and if you like this edit, leave a like on the video. And if this is your first time checking out one of my videos, it would be awesome if you subscribed. Well, I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com and this is Teach Me How to Lightroom.